This project is a Sudoku solver that I created for one of my university classes at Simon Fraser University. It compares the runtimes of different search algorithms for solving either individual Sudoku puzzles or data sets with multiple Sudoku puzzles. Uh, just a quick heads up, if you want to run this on your local machine, you will need to download a data set from Kaggle. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. It contains 9 million Sudoku puzzles in a single CSV Excel file. To download it, you just click the download button up here and it will give you a zip file. You'll just need to extract the zip file into the directory here containing main.py. It should be the root directory if you've downloaded it from GitHub. And you'll need to have Python installed and it requires the NumPy module. So to install the NumPy module, you can just run pip install NumPy and you should be good to go. So once you have everything downloaded and set up here and the data set, if you wanna run the data set, you can open up a shell in the directory and then you just need to run this command. It's python main.py followed by the name of the data set, the CSV, CSV file. And when you run it, it will run it on a certain number of puzzles. In this case, it's 2000. And that is defined in the code up here. And you can change that depending on how many you wanna run it on. You could go all the way up to 9 million if you chose to do so, as long as you're willing to wait for all of the puzzles to be solved. So since this is gonna take a while, I'm just gonna quickly cancel it. And I'm gonna pull up another one here that I had running in the background. You can see for a breadth first search, it took about 30 seconds to complete. A depth first search took about 26 seconds to complete. And then I have three different greedy algorithms here. One is based on the rows of the puzzle. One is based on the columns of the puzzle. And one is based on the cells of the puzzle. I'll explain all of those later. They ran in, in roughly 12, 18, and 18 seconds. And you may have just seen the heuristic search finish up it completed in roughly 38.4 seconds. So I'm going to close this old shell here and I'm gonna show you the second command you can run. This one is for running it on a single text file. So you specify the file name as before, except this time it's a text file instead of a CSV file. Just make sure the text input file, if you're using your own, follows this format. It is just a row of numbers where every zero represents an empty space and each number represents a filled space. So if you were to turn this row into the grid of a Sudoku puzzle, it would look like this. So you can see if we look at the top one, we have 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0. That is the first row. Okay, so back to the shell here, if we run this. You can see that it runs the three greedy searches that I uh, showed you guys above. As you can see, they are the fastest algorithms by quite a significant amount. So it shows you first the initial puzzle. Oops, sorry, it shows you the initial puzzle here. And then it will show you the result and how long it took you, how long it took the algorithm to solve it using, or sorry, how long it took the program to solve it using that specific algorithm. So you can see rows took this long, columns took roughly this long, and cells took roughly this long. So you can run this command on basically any Sudoku puzzle that is solvable. If there is a solution based on the input that you have provided, if there's a valid solution, then the, the code will solve it for you. Now I'm just gonna give a quick explanation of the greedy searches that I described above. So I'll start with rows. The search attempts to complete an entire row before moving on to the next row. So it will solve this entire row. It'll solve all of these blank spaces and it will store the additional possible numbers that could be in each cell. And then it will move on to the next row. Columns is the same thing, but it will solve one column at a time. So we'll do it vertically, and then it'll move on to the next one. If either of these algorithms come to a point where there are no possible solutions, it will backtrack all the way to the previous row or column and then try another solution. 
The greedy sales algorithm, as you saw in the code here, runs quite a bit slower than the uh, the columns and rows. In this case, it took about three times longer than the columns one, which took three times longer than the rows. This is because it solves them individually by each cell. So it goes each cell at a time. I'll solve this one. I'll try all the possible combinations, and then I'll move to the next one, which is in this case is solved. So we'll move to this one. I'll try all the possible combinations. And then every time it backtracks, it will only backtrack one individual cell at a time. So let's say there are no solutions for this number. It will backtrack to this one. And if there were no other possible numbers there, it will then backtrack to this number. Meaning if you have an issue here based on the two numbers before, it might need to backtrack up to 18 times to get to the proper solution. So that is why the cells algorithm is much slower. Um, all of the algorithms here have much more in-depth explanations that I could give. But unfortunately, the video would be much too long for for the format that I'm currently doing. Uh, but if you would like to look through the code, you can look through, for example, our breadth first search, depth first search. You can look at the heuristic search that we chose. Uh, it is well documented. It has lots of comments. Same with the greedy searches, lots of comments and documentation. And we also left in some debug functions here. They're just commented out. So if you want to mess around with the code yourself and figure out how it runs, uh, I would recommend just uncommenting some of these lines to show you what's going on in the background. And you can kind of watch it solve it live if you uncomment some of these some of these functions. And again, if if you you have any confusion or questions, you can refer back to the README here or reach out to me on GitHub. Just leave a leave a request on GitHub with your question and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Anyway, thanks for watching.